Let's read verses 15, chapter 7 in your Bibles. I'll give you a quick second to find it. Normally, yeah, I so often just have that situation when they, the passage is given and you're like, they're like scrambling away, like, ah, oh, they're reading, they're reading already, but it's fine. We're there. So, I'm giving you a few seconds. So, verse 15. I do not understand what I do. For what I do, for what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree, I agree with the law that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is the sin living in me. For I know that the good itself does not dwell in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is the sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law, but I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my, of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law. But in my sinful nature, a slave to the law of sin. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us. Who do not understand, who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds on what is, have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit of life and peace, of the, by the Spirit of life and peace, is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And if, if anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ, then do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his Spirit who lives in you. Wowzers. Let me tell you a story about one of the stupidest decisions of my life. I was in Exeter and I got invited out for a few drinks with some friends. Um, there was four of us and we were sitting in this really fancy hotel, really cozy, and we had these nice chairs and they were kind of these big kind of grandpa chairs and they were really nice and we were all sitting around having a few nice drinks, kind of around this time of year, so it was a bit cold. And so we we're probably having some nice small wine or something like that, you know. And my friend Daffod, who was sitting next to me, he had just completed 
an Iron Man a few months previously to, to the occasion. And it was the same Iron Man that I had previously done the previous year in Zurich, in Switzerland. Now, if you don't know what an Ironman is, it's a pretty stupid event because it is a four kilometer swim followed by a 180 kilometer bike followed by a marathon run, which is a 42 kilometer run. Now, it took, it took me about 14 hours to complete in the day, but, um, so it was quite a difficult challenge. Anyway, so Daff had, had also done it as well. He was, me and him were sitting there very smugly um, thinking that we were pretty invincible when it came to endurance challenges. We were sitting, he, he then turned to me and he said to me, Cameron, have you heard of this, um, of this run called the Berlin Wall Run? And I, said to, I looked over at him suspiciously, feeling this was a very charged question. No, Duff, I've never, I've never heard of this run. Um, what is it? Well, it's a hundred mile run around the same, around where the Berlin Wall used to stand. And I was like, oh God, that sounds, that sounds quite extreme. But in my mindset of, of being invincible, having done this Ironman a few months or a year previously, was like, yeah, I can definitely do it. What's, what's, what's a 24 hour run? versus 14 hours, like, what's the difference? It's not that much difference to a 14 hour triathlon. It's not that hard, like, it's gotta be pretty easy. So feeling the, the pressure from him and the, all the marketing that comes at you from the Ironman brand that says that you can do anything if you've done an Ironman, I was like, definitely, yeah, I'm gonna give it a go. I can, let's do it. So we felt like we could do it. We felt like we were invincible. It was all fine. How wrong were we? You fast forward six months, <laughs> daft. So we were about 10 hours into this run, um, about 50 miles in, and daft, <laughs> he, he, he was just running along and he was completely out of it. He, he, couldn't really, he couldn't really speak to me. He was just in a very bad way. And he was like, look, Cam, I can't go on. I've got to stop now. You carry on. So I, I continued, having had maybe 10 miles of being like, no, I've got to stay with my friend, I've got to stay with him the whole way, but no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to carry on. I then got to the 75 mile marker, and my knee seized up, and I ended up in hospital. Great, that's, that's exactly what I wanted, that's the outcome that I wanted, to be in hospital after this run. And I, was, I got taken to hospital in the middle of Berlin at 1 a.m. in the morning, this is a massive challenge for Claire to try and find me at a hospital in the middle of Berlin at 1 a.m. in the morning, because there's no public transport at 1 a.m. in the morning. Anyway, we, I'd had the, had the evening there. Basically, they just took an x-ray and they said, have some paracetamol and get on with it. And we're like, okay, great. Anyway, a, I have a photo here of the day after. If you want to put, there's, 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 there's me and my friend Daff up there. And obviously I've got my crutches and from the hospital and I was walking around. It, I, we looked very happy in that situation. I think we were just laughing at the stupidity of ourselves in that situation. But we, um, we'd just been walking around Berlin and, and I was actually in a, in a lot of pain. I was walking around like an absolute spanner basically. And, and it, was, it was very stupid. Anyway, the truth is in this story I did not acknowledge my weakness. And I thought that I could definitely do it within myself. I thought that I was invincible when it came to endurance challenges and I found my limit. Now in this passage today, Paul talks about the battle between the law of flesh and the law of God. If you quickly wanna reread verse, verse 25 in chapter seven, so I then in myself am a slave to God's law, but in my mind, but in my sinful nature, I am a slave of sin. He acknowledges his, his weakness within his body, which is what I did not do in that situation. Paul's weakness here is described as being in his flesh. If you look at verse 18, if you wanna to turn to verse 18, but I know that God, that. Good, sorry, yeah, verse 18. 
For I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. He's acknowledging his weakness. There is nothing he can do about it. He is in his flesh. He is in his body. He then goes on to say, reflect on himself. How wretched a man am I? Verse 24, if you want to look down, what a wretched man I am. And then he pleads, asking for rescue. Who will rescue me? Turn down again. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. His weakness in his body is something that he is really struggling with, that he's really battling with. That he, he says that the law of flesh is leading to death and the law of God is leading to life. But he's still in his mortal body. How do we reconcile this? How do we work out what this means in our lives today? Anyway, if we look now at verse 25 again. I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in my sinful nature a slave to the law of sin. This is Paul we're talking about. Paul has written a huge chunk of the Bible. He is so spiritually in tune with what God is saying that he has written a huge chunk of the Bible for us to read today. How, like, how am I supposed to comprehend that? I haven't written down loads of the Bible. However, we have some good news. Now, let's turn to Romans 8 verse 1. However, there is therefore now no condemnation, condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law is powerless to do because it is weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering and so he condemned sin in the flesh. That is such good news. If you have your, put your faith in Jesus, if you are a Christian here today, you have been united with Jesus on the cross. You've been, you've been put to death. You, the law of flesh has been put to death when you were united with Jesus, when he put the law of flesh to death, when you were united with him, that also happened with you. And that also means that you were raised to life and raised to the newness of life that was brought when he was raised to life because you were united with him. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You're united with him in his death. Which also means that you died to the law of the flesh as I just said. The law of the flesh is what pulls you away from a relationship with Christ Jesus. It's those things in our life that just keep pulling us, that the world wants you to do, that keep pulling us away. But there's also some good news in this that Paul talks about. We look at verse nine. You, however, those who are in Christ Jesus, you, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but you are in the realm of the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of the Spirit who lives in you. 
You are not of this, you are not of the flesh. You are of the spirit. That same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is also in you. How amazing is that truth? That's crazy. This battle that Paul is working out between the law of flesh and the law of God, this battle that is working within him is something that, that he, is, he is finding joy because he knows that the spirit is doing that battle within his mortal body in that situation. So he can take, not, he cannot feel demoralized by that situation, but he can take joy in the fact that he has, has that battle going on with him, which tells him that the spirit of God is within him. Hang on, Cam. So, we're still in the body here today. We're still in our mortal bodies. What does that mean? Let's turn to verse 10 again. But if Christ is in you, even though you are subject to death because of sin, the spirit of life gives, the spirit of life, the spirit gives life because of righteousness, and the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. You get life in your mortal bodies and we're here today. You get life because of the spirit that dwells in you. That's such good news. Now I quite often know that this is a a really tough thing for I go off, I, I go in my life and I, I feel this battle within me constantly of the, the battle of sin and, and trying to please God and trying to, um, to do what is good for him. But here, Paul acknowledges that he cannot do it. He cannot do it. It's the spirit that works in him that is this battle. So what does Paul tell us to do? He tells us to set your mind on the spirit, the spirit of life that dwells in you, that has had the power to raise Jesus. That's just so mind boggling. And one of the reasons that I chose this passage here today is because I find it so encouraging in my daily life, that I find this battle within me constantly of, oh man, like, I was really angry at that person and I've, I, 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 I'm, I'm just not doing, I'm not pleasing God right now. The things that I'm doing, in my life, I'm just not pleasing God. Hang on a second, you have the spirit within you. That weakness that you feel in those moments are the points at which you can turn to God and set your mind on the spirit. Do not turn to yourself in these battles that we have. But take courage to know that the Spirit is also helping you. The Spirit is there working within you. And that means that you have the Spirit of God within you. Acknowledging your your mortal bodies, acknowledging your weakness, and allowing your mind to be set on the Spirit of God will change you and help you in all of these difficult situations. And this is the message that Paul is saying to us. And he's, he's empathizing. He's saying, look, I struggle with these things as well. But I have the spirit within me. And if there's one thing that you've heard today from what I'm saying as I waffle on, is that I hope that you can see that the spirit of God dwells within you. Thanks, guys. Can I pray? Should I pray? Yeah, I'll pray. Lord God, thank you so much for giving us your word. That you encourage us through it, that you allow Paul to speak to the Romans and allow us to hear what he has to say. Father, we thank you so much that you're here with us, that you don't just leave us in our mortal bodies but that you have interceded by sending your son, Jesus, for us to be united with him in his death and be raised to life with him. And that that means that the spirit of God dwells within us. 
And that even though we might struggle with our daily lives and the things that we do and um, really struggle to feel like we actually are worthy of, of being in a relationship with you, but that you have sent your, sent your spirit to intercede and help us and guide us in these, in these difficult times for us. Lord, we love you and we thank you so much. And Lord, I pray for everyone, anyone here today who feels like they are really struggling to justify their relationship with you, that really struggle and feel like they are not worthy of being in a relationship with you, that this is part of that you have sent your son so that you can, we can be in relationship with you. And it's nothing that we can do in ourselves, but it's what your son has done on the cross through your son, Jesus. And we can turn to that and set our minds on the spirit that dwells within us. In Jesus' name, amen.